so in this video right here, what I'm going to be showing you guys is my entire workflow. Now, I've uh, recently built, uh, you know, like kind of like a Heroku clone. I mean, it's not exactly like Heroku, but that's, you know, the kind of the project we're going to be building is basically having your own, uh, you know, system where you deploy to and it's all automated. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys all the components that go on and the workflow that you have uh, when you have this kind of setup. So let's start with this here. So this is uh, the drone CI and this is the continuous integration and continuous deployment server that I've set up. And what it is, is it allows me to test my code. So it'll run the test. When the test passes, it's going to build my production container and ship it to a registry. Now, I'm not gonna show you everything. Today I'm just gonna show you the workflow and how beautiful it is when you're working with something like Docker and have this whole setup working. All right, so I'm gonna head over to GitHub. Uh, you know, I have some bugs here. I'm using uh, AppSignal uh, to track errors. And basically I've got some bugs here in production that I wanna fix. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna head over to my terminal and here it is. I've already done the fix. So I'm just gonna do a commit. So some of you guys may be experiencing this bug uh, as of right now. And this is, you know, me actually going to be fixing this live on screen with you guys. Uh, I'm going to push this to origin master. And in GitHub, uh, basically what I have is, you know, the kind of workflow I have is I have the original source code um, in my organization and I did a fork to my own account and that's where I'm working off and what I'm going to do is once I've pushed the bug fix I'm going to do a new pull request and what this is going to do is allow me to compare and check out you know what changes I did in my code uh, you know like the, the, there's a few bugs I fixed here the mailer is not working and you know the I'm getting 404s because I had, you know, like a different URL for some of the posts. So this is what I'm going to use to fix all that. And now I've already implemented the fix. What I'm going to do is create a pull request. And uh, all right. So I'm going to click create pull request. Now what's going to happen here is the CI server is going to detect that I've created a pull request and it's going to automatically run the test. So if I go over here, uh, and I hit reload, you'll see that it's now running the test. And once the test finishes and it passes, um, then we're gonna see what's gonna happen next. All right, so my test has passed, and what I'm going to do now is head over into GitHub. So as you can see, all the actions that I'm doing is all happening here within GitHub. So, you know, as a uh, senior programmer or a CTO, you know, is my role to review my peers' work, uh, you know, and, and everyone in the team should be able to review the code. And that's what this, you know, pull request is for. So I can actually, you know, okay, the test is passed. I can go and see the file change, what kind of code is being written, what's been committed, what's been changed. You know, this is to promote transparency within the organization. And so once all that's done and you're reviewed and you're happy with the work, uh, you know, the, the, the senior programmer, the lead developer, has an opportunity to say, you know what, this is good, let's merge. He or she merges, and then now the CI server is going to automatically run the test uh, to make sure, you know, in, in case you have, you know, multiple people committing, um, just to ensure that everything's working right. Then what this is going to do now, it's not just going to run the test, it's actually going to build the, the container image and then ship it into a registry, which will then um, you know have the new update and then what it's going to do as well is trigger an update uh, in the staging server so over here what I've got is my staging environment as you can see here uh, this is the Codemy app that I'm fixing and this is the staging environment uh, so in a minute once the test runs and everything passes and you know all is well with the world it's going to trigger a update over here, um, you know, automatically without me having to do anything. All right, so we can see now the test has passed and you can see here it's going to build the container. Right here, it's building the container now and you can see here, very, very cool. 
All right, so this is the actual build process. As you can see here, it's doing assets uh, compilation as well. Uh, so everything is gonna be built. As I mentioned, you know, it's all built and ready to go for production in the container. And all we have to do is move the container into place. And even that process has been automated. All right, successfully built the container. Now it's going to ship the container into a registry. And the registry I'm using is the Google Container Registry. Uh, there are a few registry options out there. Uh, Quay.io is one of them, and the official Docker Hub is also one of them. Uh, they all have options for private registries, which is what you want to use. If you have, um, you know, non-open source like your own commercial apps that you, you know, you want to keep private, uh, they all have that option. Uh, even Amazon has one. So you know, take your pick, whichever one you like the most. Uh, I like the Google one. Uh, they have a, you know, the pretty solid one, and it's the 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 sole reason why I chose Google was how fast it is to download images from there. It's just really, it's a speed demon. Uh, you know, by far, from my test, I've used all of them. I've used, um, you know, the Docker Hub official one. I've used the Quay one. Uh, by far, Google is the fastest. And the reason behind that is because um, Google allows you to pick which region. And my servers are located in Singapore and Asia. And Google allows me to choose, you know, where I store my registry. So I can store it in Asia. And that's why, you know, it's fast. Uh, but, you know, if you're in the US, Quay.io or Docker Hub will work just fine as well. All right, so now it's uploaded the uh, container into the registry. What's gonna do now is it's going to actually trigger a deploy. Uh, and what I'm using to manage my application is Rancher over here. And as you can see, it's already triggered the update. So now I'm getting the update all happening automatically. I'm not clicking a thing, like my hands are up, like over here. So, you know, the whole process from actually committing code, pushing it up, doing code review, is all actually separated. And, you know, 90% of that process, the only process that's not automated is code review. And you don't want to automate that anyway, because you want to have someone, you know, highly technical, reviewing code and giving comments and suggestions to your teammates. So, you know, the part that should be done manually is being done manually. And the part that needs to be automated is automated uh, so it's, it's a beautiful system and you can see here uh, the upgrade is happening and you know once the upgrade is happening you can actually review uh, before you accept um, you know any further updates so as you can see here it, it you know you have to click finish upgrade um, you know so what one would do is one would go to the staging site and you know check out okay everything seems to be working um, you know, the upgrade happened successfully. You can have people review, um, you know, making sure that everything's okay. Then you say, hey, you know what? That looks good. I'm going to finish the upgrade. And now um, what we're going to do next is we are going to move over to uh, getting this code. Let's say we're happy with everything on staging. Uh, let's get this deployed on production. And um, I especially like this part because now you can actually use the release feature in GitHub and it will actually deploy into production for you. So over here, I've got the latest release of, uh, of my uh, Codemy site and it's version 1.1.4. So what I'm gonna do is create a new release. Um, and in this release, I'm gonna do v1.1.5. And I'm gonna say, um, you know, fix, mailer and um, slug redirection. So here I'm gonna say uh, the details of what I did in the actual you know release. Uh, so added um, postmark API key to the secret. All right, so this looks good. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and publish this release. And what this is going to do is it's going to trigger a change. So I can see here, you know, everything looks great. Okay, I have version 1.1.5. I can now go and take a look at my CI server. So if I go over here. So it's actually now creating the deployment. It's, you know, going to run the test. It's going to do, you know, all the stuff that it's supposed to do. Um, you know, build a new image based on the version, based on the release that we made. And, uh, you know, so at this point, my hands are off the keyboard and the mouse, everything's automated. 
Um, and then now, all I'm gonna do is just to show you guys, I'm gonna head over from the staging over to the production environment, and then we're gonna take a look at what's going on in there. So I can, as you can see here, this is the production environment. I've got, you know, version 1.1.4 deployed over here, the web and the worker. Um, so, you know, as soon as the CI finishes running and, you know, building and pushing it up to the registry, it's gonna trigger a update and you're gonna see the version here change. Now what that means is, uh, you know, later, we're gonna be talking a lot about this tool, Rancher. Um, you know, Rancher is an amazing tool, and again, I'm gonna put the links in the description below for you guys to check out. Um, you know, they've, got, they've done a really amazing job, and this is definitely the future of Docker and workflow and everything. I'm putting, you know, all my chips in on, on there with, with them. Like, they're doing a really great job, so kudos to the guys over at Rancher highly you know support you guys and basically we're going to do a video tutorial on like basically this whole series on docker everything that i've just talked about the whole workflow the whole setup i'm going to be showing you guys how to do all of that and that includes setting up rancher um getting it up on your you know environment like how do you put that into um your servers whether using amazon or digital ocean or linode or uh, Google Cloud, whatever it is that you want to use, the beautiful thing about Rancher is you can put your servers anywhere and you can put them all in one place in Rancher. Uh, so let me, so before we, we digress, uh, let me let me just show you that the update is going to happen. So here it is, uh, it's running, it's building the container and uh, once we trigger the update, I'll show you around Rancher a little bit and you know I'll show you how cool it is and, and what you can do with it. All right, so here it is, it's done. Let's take a look. Uh, so any moment now, there we go, look at that. Uh, it's automatically doing the upgrade and um, you know, all this without me doing a thing. Like all I did was, you know, I created the release and it ran the test and it built the image and it shipped the image into the registry and it triggered trigger an update. Um, and that whole process happened without any intervention. So as a developer, as a team, uh, all I would have to do is, you know, work in GitHub. And, and it, that's great because, you know, all, I'm here. Like, you know, as a developer, I don't want to worry about the infrastructure. It's all abstracted away from me now. Um, and, you know, you, you can do code reviews. So, you know, you can do a pull request, see code reviews. And then, you know, there's actually someone actually doing a release. You know, you're actually using the release feature in GitHub in order to trigger a production deploy. And you can see the kind of thing that's going on, what changes happened, and you know that what that means is it makes rollbacks really, really easy. Like if you messed up, you can roll back by you know, going into Rancher and doing a, a downgrade. Uh, so here I just click finish upgrade, but if I didn't, I can do a rollback and it'll revert the changes, you know, if everything wasn't all right. Um, you know, as you can see here, I'll, I'll, before I click finish, I'll give show you guys the options that are available. Um, so, you know, it's a full flexible deploy. So like, okay, for example, if I didn't f click finish upgrade, I click here, it's gonna allow me to say, you know what, I, I wanna roll back, you know, that, that I messed up with the production release, I can do a rollback. Uh, but in this case, everything is fine. So I'm gonna click finish. And there it is. Now everything is live and you can see the version has changed as well. And um, another cool thing I wanted to point out is, so I use um, AppSignal and they're great. These guys are amazing. Um, I highly recommend them if you're doing performance tracking, error tracking, they have everything integrated. They're very tightly integrated with the Rails ecosystem. So background jobs, everything is all here. And uh, I have not seen anybody do integration with Rails and performance tracking like the way these guys do. And they have saved my butt a few times. So over here, I'm gonna show you guys something. So here we have deploy markers as well. So if I click on the deploys, I can actually see, okay, version 1.1.5 was just de deployed. So it's been live for, you know, two minutes. And basically what happens is all the errors, I can see the snapshots. Like, all right, so if I click on the errors here, um, what I can actually do is let's say, you know, right now in the new version, there hasn't been any errors. So I can go back and see what errors happen in the previous version. And I can see, you know, in this version, if there are any errors that came up, you know, I can see error specific 
to the different versions and this integrates with github so you can say you know what in this version there was this error so it makes it very easy and streamlined like to track your errors and, and all that stuff and you know these guys have been great so um i integrated the ci into here as well and what i can do is i click on deploy and i can see the changes that happened between uh, between 1.1.4 and 1.1.5 so you know you can see what changed between the two versions and they do all that for you uh, you know they make it very easy and accessible to see the changes between different versions and track errors for different versions um, so you know I'm gonna put a link for these guys in the, the description below and if you use that link to sign up you get a hundred dollars which is great and that gives me a hundred dollars as well so if you want to support the channel click that link sign up for app signal it's free to use you, you get a hundred dollars you could probably use it for a pretty long time if you use a basic plan um you know so yeah uh these guys are awesome so they are also a part of the whole workflow and the other guys that i'm using is paper trail so these guys allow me to kind of like uh, amalgamate like put all the logs in one place so over here you can see you know, all the logs are in one place for my, for everything in my, I have like a few apps running in my infrastructure, all the apps, all the uh, logs for all the apps are here and I can track errors. I can see, you know, visibility is a very big thing. I can see the problem right away. Um, and I can search, you know, do all kinds of cool stuff with this, with this. And I will also put the link uh, for this uh, in the section below. And if you use that link, you know, we all get, awesome stuff for free um, so these these are kind of like the workflow tools so these four there's rancher which is completely free and open source um, drone CI which is completely free and open source so these guys are doing an amazing job as well there's tons of plugins out there they're kind of like the WordPress of the continuous delivery continuous integration servers um, app signal and then paper trail so I use these four every day in my in my workflow to track problems, to figure things out, you know, to track performance problems, errors, whatever, um, view the logs. These are kind of like my four uh, best friends when I'm deploying, uh, working on an application. And right now I'm also doing a lot of uh, client um, consultations. And, uh, you know, I also suggest that, you know, they use these four tools. These are handpicked. I've, you know, gone through a lot of tools uh, and, it seems that these this combination just works really really well and uh, also you know the whole workflow with github you know that whole thing for me right now i'm in development heaven like this works really really well um did i also mention that over here like if i want to scale up i can just do an edit and then just drag um so i can you know scale up and down based on um the needs i mean the more traffic i have the more i can scale up or down if i don't have any traffic um yeah so th that's gonna wrap it up for this video i hope you guys found this useful we talked about the whole workflow of you know everything we're gonna be building and all the tools we're gonna be integrating between um there is rancher there is drone there is uh app signal and then this paper trail so you know i'm gonna wire all these tools up to give you guys, you know, if you're a small or medium sized uh, tech company, you know, these tools are, are amazing because they're well, really well priced. They're not so expensive, like, you know, not like New Relic. New Relic charges per host. AppSignal is just like one flat monthly fee. Um, Paper Trail as well, uh, you know, very low monthly fee. Um, and the other tools are free. And the, uh, the only other thing you have to pay for is DigitalOcean or Amazon or Linode, which you have to pay for anyway. Um, and you have full flexibility to build your infrastructure or architecture however you want, build the workflow you want. And uh, yeah, this is an amazing system and this is what I've been working for for the past three months and I am very, very happy with the outcome. And hopefully once you guys learn how to do this, you're gonna be very happy and customize it and build your own workflow as well. I'll see you guys in the next one.